So in the final video in this unit, we're going to look at components, what I call components, which are 10 categories of information that are found in most research articles and usually in a pretty predictable order. And again, if you know how to find them, if you know what's going to be there and what order, it's going to be easier for you to read articles and it will also be important in writing up your information because you know what the expected order is. So the first three are usually found in the introduction and they talk about why are we doing this research in the first place. First, you find usually the motivation, the importance to society, the importance to researchers in the field. That's followed by something about the limitations of previous research. Again, either the research gap, something that has never been studied, or the limitations of, of previous research. Uh, something like, this has been done, however, there's still a problem to be solved. And then the research goal. And again, this can be presented as research questions or as the aim of a study, depending on uh, the particular field that you're in. So again, these are usually found in the introduction. The first paragraph, sometimes the first two paragraphs, are usually the motivation for the study. The last paragraph in the introduction is almost always the, the research goal, the contribution of the study. And then in between that is where you find the deficiency, the limitations, the research gap, the previous work that's been done, but there's still something missing. And then you go on into the methods or the, uh, the process division, and this is where you find, how did we do it? And there are three main things here as well. The foundation, the, the research details, and the testing methods. Now, these are not always found in the, the methods division. Again, it depends. There's a difference between science and engineering. But let me describe each of these first, because they're, again, found in, in both. The foundation indicates the theoretical framework, the foundation on, on which you're building your work, the, the model. Or perhaps if there are different options, it may talk about why did you choose to follow a particular method or model. Then the research details will talk about the detailed procedures you followed in the case of science or the steps that you followed in your design in the process division. And then the testing methods talks about standard procedures, standard testing procedures, and how the results will be compared with the expectations or with previous results. Now again, the research details, that's basically the methods, and that's pretty easy to find. It may be one section in IMRD, it may be several sections in engineering, in the process division, but it's fairly straightforward. The foundation can be in different places. Sometimes it will be just a very short indication just before the research goal, one paragraph or even part of a paragraph. Sometimes it's not really stated. If there's only one main method that's being used in a field at a particular time, they may not state the research goal. Again, this is very different from social science where it's very common, uh, almost ubiquitous to state the, uh, the theoretical framework that the work is based on. Uh, there may be a separate section it may be found in the literature review. It may be found in a section called perhaps preliminaries, after the introduction, but before the, the methods. And then again, the testing methods, usually in IMRD, the last section of the methods will talk about statistical testing. It will talk about how the data were collected and how they were compared with other previous work or within the within that paper. Sometimes it'll be called experimental design or something like that. Uh, it accomplishes the same purpose of talking about how this data will be collected and analyzed. In engineering, however, as I mentioned in the last tape, this is often found in the same paragraph with the results and discussion in the testing division. 
Nevertheless, all of these are going to be there someplace because they're important parts of doing the research. And then the last section talks about what did we accomplish? This is the results and discussion of a typical IMRD paper. The data patterns, uh, I, I use the term patterns because data by themselves are not very useful until you discern a pattern. And this is the reason that we often present the data in tables or figures, because it makes it easier to see the pattern. And exceptions to the pattern, if there are exceptions, those are very important as well. So that's basically the results portion of, of a paper. Then you have the comparison and, and interpretations. These are the discussion. Comparison with either the expectation, the expected results, the hypothesized results, or previous work. And the interpretation, why did we get this? What's the explanation? Comparisons is generally more important in engineering. Interpretations is generally more important in science. But again, there's some variation depending on the particular research that's being done. And then the conclusion, a statement, a summary of, of what you learned in this and leading on to the future work, that's again found either in a separate conclusion section or in the last paragraph or two of, of the discussion. And sometimes, again, in engineering, you'll find the, uh, the testing method, the data, and the comparison and interpretation cycling uh, several times through as it talks about each different test that was done. Uh, and again, this is very different from the, the typical structure in a science paper. So each field is a little different and it's important to learn to recognize the structure in your field, in your journals, in your topic. And so uh, it's good to work with an instructor who knows the field, who can help you to recognize that. That will allow you to recognize each of these components more quickly. And then once you recognize them, it will make it much easier to, to do your research. I encourage you to try to look at each paragraph and determine what's the main component in that paragraph. Again, often that will be indicated in the first sentence of the paragraph if the paper is well written. And that will help you know how much attention you need to pay to each paragraph in that paper. There may be paragraphs that you can skip over because they're not relevant to, to your particular work. Now, conference papers and letters, as I mentioned earlier in the unit, are very similar in structure to a full research article, but often shorter. They may have less introduction, less details on the, the process, less details on the testing, uh, but they follow basically the same order. But some parts may be missing completely. So just be aware of that as, as you read. And then review articles, as we said in the last tape, uh, are, are separate. They have a different structure, a different purpose, and therefore very different components. You won't find these same components in a review article, so don't look for them. Okay, so that should help you to, to get started in reading research articles. And again, when it comes to writing, you need to follow the same structure because, as we said at the beginning, People are looking for certain things. They're looking for things in a particular order. And if you present them in that order, it's easy for them to, to find them. And therefore, it's easier for you to get published or for, in the case of iGEM, for the judges to find the, the information that they're looking for in order to give you the highest points possible.